Bonjour Philippines! Today we are in Kandoni, in Negros Island in the Visayas region. And we're going to meet another key role of society. Yes, John, we will meet a teacher, but not any teacher. Someone who is working in a school, in the middle of the mountains, with poor access to internet, facing the challenges of the pandemic. Nelson, I'm very curious about it. Me too. So let's see, let's watch. Let's go, let's meet her. This second episode brings us to Kandoni, a modest town in the province of Negros Occidental. After taking the plane from Manila to Bacolod, we then took the bus during five hours to arrive to this amazing place. Upon arriving, we met Jomar, a coordinator from Gawad Kalinga, a local NGO, who will help us for this extraordinary journey across the mountains of Kondoni to the beautiful seashore of Sipalai. When we arrive at Kondoni, we are happy to see Jomar because we are a bit in the middle of nowhere, outside of our comfort zone. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Okay, bro. So, we just arrived in, in Kandoni, and... Uh, we are Be careful with the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah. Because look at the setup. Before going in the mountain and the remote areas of Kandoni, Jomar brings us to his mother's house. Unfortunately, it was heavily damaged by Typhoon Odette last year. Six months later, the reconstruction is barely done. I was with you? Yeah. Oh, wow, you guys were together? Wait, can I say this? Yes. Yes. So, okay. we were together nine years ago when I was a GK volunteer. Not nine, seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Go, pay me Go, see you again then. Okay. Being there with Jomar brings us seven years ago, when we discovered the Philippines for the first time, with Gawad Kalinga, aiming to fight poverty across the country. You can help paint I came here seven years ago for the yeah to paint a little bit and to put the, the mud on ah, the okay. So thank you very much. Right away with the beneficiary. Yeah. When I was, Seven years ago, I was little. With those memories in mind, Nelson and I immediately felt that something special was happening. Remembering all the great moments we had when we lived with Filipinos, learning what life was from the other side of the world. And I have to admit, I also thought of my then girlfriend, my first love, and that even if time passes, that memories fade, that people leave, the heart never forgets. After this moving reunion, we are back on our journey for an hour and a half of tricycle. And we feel great! So, we're going to the... <laughs> you okay, Nelson? Yes! Yes! <laughs> I thought, I thought was good. There's a big curve right now, hold on. So, we're going to the school in the middle of the mountains right now. I'm very excited to see. We're going to meet the teacher and the kids there. I'm laughing because Nelson is almost falling right now. So it's the adventure, guys! The adventure! Woo! It's at Damutan, a school perched in the mountain of Negros and isolated, that we are going to meet a group of incredible teachers. Even if the newly built road make our trip easier, we have to pass through rivers, trails, section of road under construction but the landscape are breathtaking. So the school is there. It's quite big, actually. Okay. The lip is uh, start to design a strong and good uh, building of the school. Oh, okay. uh, it's a newly building. Because there's nothing around here. Huh? Yeah. Like we're in the middle of everything, bro. There's nothing. <laughs> yeah, there is nothing. Let's check. Just a road. Let's check. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Once there, we are welcomed by inhabitants of an exceptional oh, kindness. 49 years old. 49 years old. Wow. <laughs> and how are you? Good? Kumusta? Good. Kumusta? Nice. And what's your name? 
Marjorie. Marjorie. Honko. Marjorie Honko. 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 Okay. Pinkas. Pinkas. It's your full name. Marjorie Honko Pinkas. Oh, sure. Nice to meet you, Marjorie. <laughs> you have a nice smile. Yeah. <laughs> there is a special atmosphere around this school. The children and the people have big smiles. We want to know more. So, we are in Damutan Elementary School. That's right there, John. And actually, it's a pretty big school. There is a lot of kids, but what is interesting is most of the kids, they come from very far. Some, they do more than 30 kilometers to come to the school. And now we are waiting for the teacher. Hopefully, she's coming soon. We can talk to her, discover uh, her daily life, why she's a teacher here, and ask her many questions. While waiting for everyone, we get to know one of the teachers, telling us that they sometimes ride their motors for two hours to arrive at the school. Because of the road, because of the distance, and it is also not easy for the children, apparently. How the kids are coming here? That they come by tricycle, by I know, motorcycle? Walking. Walking. I mean, it's all, I walking. Wow, walking? Uh, How many kilometers do they walk though? <laughs> Some students walk in three kilometers, some two kilometers. Uh, they have nearest five kilometers. Five kilometers. <laughs> wow. And oh, yeah, you're happy to go back to school? <laughs> yes. 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 You're happy? Yes. <laughs> yes. She's a nice teacher. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> no one's understanding your dialogue. <laughs> so, we decide to do a little visit of the school. And honestly, we are pleasantly surprised because we didn't expect that at all for an isolated school in the mountains. The buildings are solid, the school is well maintained, and the classrooms are relatively modern. Still waiting for Mam Shekara, we sit in the teacher's room and we all start talking together. The teacher say that 80% of the students here are IPs. But what they will tell us after will shock us a bit. Uh, so the, the education for them is not, I mean, it's not, it's not prioritized. It's not prioritized. Mm -hmm. As long as they have their money every day, just like pangulin, okay. illegal lagi, ay lagi, so it's okay for them. Okay. So education is not a priority. So uh, that's why we really need to educate them how important education is because at the very young age here, so now I I observe that some pupils or students have no plans in going to school anymore because of um, helping their parents to early, early pregnancy. Okay. okay. At what age? When, when okay. Yeah. One of your pupils at an early time. Yeah. Uh, grade five. So grade, grade, five five. Grade, grade 5 is what? 11 years old. old. 11 so, years old, they stop school. Yeah, they, stop, they stop schooling because they... Right? <laughs> they got... Ano na, na, they settle down as early as that. They, early they pregnancy. Early pregnancy at 11, 12? Yes. Wow. Wow. So young. Wow, at 12 years. Okay. But their partners are... 32 years 40, old. 40 years old. So... And then she tells us about the limits of the distance school system. Because what you have to know is that the children are exceptionally here these days. Because they're getting their model lessons from the school. And then, once done, they're going back at home. And the problem is that the teacher often faces the fact that the parents sometimes do the homework and even the evaluations in place of the children. And they do it? They can do it? Not exactly, sir. So. Some of our pupils, they're... Okay. And um, they let their parents answer the movement, so. <laughs> so we're gonna give grades to their parents and not to, to our pupils. Are listening, yes, sir? Yeah. So the parents are... The parents By finishing discussing these serious and sometimes sensible subjects, we find this good humor and this joie de vivre that we love in the Philippines. And Jolly May even tried to match yeah, Mam Shekara up with Jolly. Are you married? Uh, no, but I have a girlfriend. Wow. Uh, not yet. How about you, sir? No, I'm single. Yeah. We have one of our colleagues. Is Shikara is yeah. single. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they're, um, they're sending me a friend. Shikara, she's there. Shikara is there. Shikara is very beautiful. Speaking of Mam Shikara, 
Hello. 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 I, I bought a balloon. Hello, people. Ready? Okay. Ready? Sing. Us, we choose the song Frère Jacques, Brother John. It's a fairly easy song, even if the pronunciation can be complicated. We don't really know how they're going to get out of it, but we will see. We will write different song, but yeah. So which song, John? Frère Jacques, no? Frère Jacques, okay. Yeah, S, Frère Jacques. Yeah. Okay, teacher Nelson is going to, to so teach. So the first one is... Frère Jacques, Frère Jacques, dormez-vous, dormez-vous. Sonnez les matines, sonnez les matines. Ding dang dong, ding dang dong. Okay, your turn. And there, we realize why they are teacher. Mam Shikara start a real pronunciation work with the children so they understand and learn new things. Ferry, is that right? Ferry. Frère. 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 Yeah, Frère. Frère. Jacques. Jacques. Frère Jacques. Frère Jacques. Frère Jacques. The children look a little lost here. At this point, we don't really know if it's going to work. Are they going to sing for our Jacques? Let's go! Okay, one, two, three. After the activity, we sit with Mam Shekara to discuss a little more. And we are going to understand that those women are much more than simple teachers. What do you like as a teacher? As a teacher, in molding students, I like to share my experiences to them. I like to uh, mingle with them, to play with them. And um, kids are so interesting. That's it. And um, I like to um, mold them to be a better person and to be uh, able to help their parents also and to let them realize um, the big world in order for them to be ready facing the real struggle or the real life and to accomplish the real struggles. Huh? struggles. You can say the real struggles. The real struggles, really. Because, um, one of your uh, colleagues was telling us that some kids, they drop school at 11 or 12 because of early pregnancy. And you as a teacher, do you give them personal advice? We used to uh, tell them that uh, they don't have to be, that they don't need to have a boyfriend from this young age because you cannot 
uh, say that you can be tempted, that's it. And um, actually, those uh, these students are not totally aware of um, yeah, uh, same, sa same, birthing, same, same, yeah, birth control. control. Birth control. Yeah. And then uh, she ends so up telling us the story that moved us. Time that um, my student, um, like they have lunchbox, they used to eat half of it because of the it will be served as their snacks and the half of it will be served as lunch and um, it's so heartbreaking that I saw them like that and uh, that's why every Monday like before I go here I used to prepare biscuits or like like mga chichiria that's pika pika those things tell them oh, why are you here inside the classroom you should be go out and then go buy your food but they said that they don't have money, so mom, we just go to we just go play. I really appreciate their um, effort in um, treasuring education because even if it's too far, even if they don't have money, they still here. They still used to go here in school. Okay. After this super enriching day with John Omar, the cousin of Jomar, he is a sailor. He works on ships all over the world and he builds a lodge in the middle of the mountains. The place is just so beautiful. We're super lucky to be here. And wow, thanks to Julian, Joma's wife. She prepared a delicious meal for us. I can't wait to eat that. This is chicken adobo, right? Yeah, chicken adobo. Uh, thank you so much guys for welcoming us, feeding us, yeah. bringing us around. While eating, we chat with Omar, who tells us about his work. And the least we can say is that it's really not easy. During my vacation. But usually how long is the vacation? It might now, according to my company, maybe three months now. So she... And, and then the other nine months you're here, mm, uh, you're in the boat? No, seven months. I think. Seven months, so three months home, seven months on the ship. And do you miss your family when you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> but uh, it's only the chances that you have to earn more mm -hmm. because my salary cannot, I could not find in the Philippines. Only so I have to go abroad to make uh, more money. We finish eating and then we settle down comfortably to sleep. We're exhausted from the day. But in the night, something won't let us sleep. C'est magnifique. Ouais, c'est super nice. Regarde les nuages au-dessus des montagnes. C'est fou, non C'est majestueux comme vue. Ouais. After breakfast, we say goodbye or farewell to Omar and Sky, and we go to the Ipis village. So we're on the way to the tribal community right now. But before arriving, we have a problem. The road is blocked. Then we meet this lady. We can just walk, it's okay, we are young. How far? Ah! Leg, you know, huh? <laughs> and she absolutely wants to show us her house, devastated by Typhoon Odette. And how do you do now when it's rainy? Or where do you sleep when it's rainy? But the rain. You have kids? Oh, and where they, where do they sleep? Here also? With you? And when I learned that she has been sleeping here with her two children, it's hard. Maybe the hardest moment of the adventure. So I stay alone and 
promised myself to see her before to leave. So we are walking on the way to the High Peace village because the bridge was broken. We tried to pass by a motorcycle, but we couldn't. And we meet someone. Hi, morning guys. Hello, morning. Magandang gumaga. And uh, yeah, so we have to walk for 20 minutes and we will know more about the, um, the tribe there, the IPs people. And, uh, Where are they going? Where? Hey! Oi! Oi! Hi! 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 <laughs> Arriving in the village, we are quite surprised because the houses are simple but well built and there are flowers, it's clean. We feel that this community is really well managed. Here we meet Limuel, the chief of the Booking Don Maha tribe, in which we find ourselves. And we have some questions for him. We're very curious. He will tell us more about the high peace uh, culture and more about the community, how they live, where they work. So, yeah. Let's go, it is out there. How's the life here? What's the daily life here? We have uh, farming. Farming? Uh, rice? rice? And then kind of on a flat track. Either banana. Banana? Yeah. Or, or any fruit. Uh, coffee. coffee. We also want to know more about the children and their schooling. And the children here, they go to... School. Damutuan school, right? Mm. Sorry, not Damutan. 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 They go to Damutan. My elementary school. Uh, 20 kilometers, sir. 20 kilometers uh, to go to Maxai Sai? Uh, How do they go? Uh, by motor. Motor? Motorcycle. Motor lang. Yeah, they cannot uh, walk. <laughs> too far. It's too far to walk, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Speaking of children, there are many in the village. So John is trying a little approach. But it's not easy to communicate because I'm not sure if they speak together. They speak Tagalog or not? Uh, ano grade mo? Gusto? Marunong ka na masalita ng Tagalog? Hindi pa. Hindi pa. Up here? No, up here? No, no, up here? You know, up here? Up here na. Ah, you see? You know, up here? Uh, up here? That's one? Yeah! Before reaching the magnificent coast of Sipalay, not far from here, we visit another school, in the middle of the mountains as well. Very difficult to access. It's easy to access this school. Huh? Yeah. Be careful your head, bro. Okay. Yeah. Here, the students are not yet authorized to come back to school yet. But maybe they will soon. So the parent and the teacher are in full preparation right now. And what a surprise to meet Marjorie again. We see you everywhere. Yeah. We have the nicest smile in all Kondoni Barangay. <laughs> I swear. Uh, it's very Thank good. It's mandatory to have um, like the president, for example, inside the school class. Yes, sir. It's mandatory. Yes. Here. So an artist did that. It's, it's really nice, actually. So this is, this is the evaluation about this DM. Okay. For water, sanitation, uh, hygiene, the warming, and health education. Okay. After this unusual visit, we decided to leave Kandami. A lot of people from here told us to go to Sipalai because we wanted to relax a bit for the end of the adventure. So we hit the road again for two hours. And thanks to the kindness of Carl and Kandami tourism team, we are going to the beach. We are now in Sipalai, still in Negros, complete change of environment. Actually, people in Kandoni told us that our trip in Negros will be not complete if we don't come to this place. 
So we free our schedule. Take the time to come here. John? Oh, John is drinking a beer. And this is really what I love when I go on adventures uh, with John is that we are free. Free to meet extraordinary people, free to go with the flow, follow the recommendation of people. And that's what I believe is adventure. At least it's my vision of adventure. This little stay in Sipalai allows us to rest physically and mentally after a truly emotional adventure. Nelson and I reflect and take a step back from our experience. And you know, that's when we realize how lucky we are to be here, how far we've come since we arrived in the Philippines. And then that our history here in this country is directly linked to the school we went to, to the teachers we had, and to education opportunities. When we think about our education, passionate teacher like Mam Shikara gave us the opportunity to explore this beautiful world, to open our mind to different culture, to enjoy this amazing journey and to be free to do whatever we want. Exactly. And despite the difficult environment, the pandemic challenges, the social and economic inequalities of those remote areas, those teachers do their best every day with a dream to provide a better future to the next generations. So kids, go to school. And at the beach, maybe.